Good morning, my friends. Welcome to St. Paul the Apostle Catholic Church. Today, we were able to do our first outdoor um, masses on a Sunday, both in the, in the, at the ministry center and in the courtyard. So we are thankful that we are able to gather. So today, as we celebrate the 17th Sunday in Ordinary Time, we begin it with a song. Gather your people, O Lord. Gather your people, O Lord, one bread, one body, one spirit of love. Gather your people, O Lord, gather your people, O Lord. Gather your people, O Lord, one bread, one body, one spirit of love. Gather your people, O Lord. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. My dear friends, as we are gathered today by the Lord to celebrate our faith and to give Him praise and worship, we also take this time to call to mind our sins and failures, and we ask God to grant us pardon and forgiveness. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, Heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, Only Begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, receive our, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. O God, protector of those who hope in you, without whom nothing has firm foundation, nothing is holy. Bestow in abundance your mercy upon us, and grant that with you as our ruler and guide, we may use the good things that pass in such a way as to hold fast even now to those that ever endure. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. A reading from the first book of Kings. The Lord appeared to Solomon in a dream at night. God said, Ask something of me, and I will give it to you. Solomon answered, O Lord, my God, you have made me your servant, king to succeed my father David. But I am a mere youth, not knowing at all how to act. I serve you in the midst of the people whom you have chosen, a people so vast that it cannot be numbered or counted. Give your servant, therefore, an understanding heart to judge your people and to distinguish right from wrong. For who is able to govern this vast people of yours? The Lord was pleased that Solomon made this request. So God said to him, Because you have asked for this, not for a long life for yourself, nor for riches, nor for the life of your enemies, but for understanding, so that you may know what is right. I do as you requested. I give you a heart so wise and understanding that there has never been anyone like you up to now. And after you, there will come no one to equal you. The word of the Lord. Lord, I love your commands. Lord, I love your commands. I have said, O Lord, that my part is to keep your words. The law of your mouth is to me more precious than thousands of gold and silver pieces. Lord, I love your commands. Let your kindness comfort me, 
according to your promise to your servants. Let your compassion come to me that I may live, for your law is my delight. Lord, I love your commands. For I love your commands more than gold, however fine. For in all your precepts I go forward. Every false way I hate. Lord, I love your commands. Wonderful are your decrees, therefore I observe them. The revelation of your words sheds light, giving understanding to the simple. Lord, I love your commands. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, we know that all things work for good for those who love God, who are called according to his purpose. For those he foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed to the image of his son, so that he might be the firstborn among many brothers and sisters. And those he predestined, he also called. And those he called, he also justified. And those he justified, he also glorified. The word of the Lord. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. Blessed are you, are you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, for you have revealed to little ones the mysteries of the kingdom. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord. Jesus said to his disciples, The kingdom of heaven is like a treasure buried in a field, which a person finds and hides again, and out of joy goes and sells all that he has and buys that field. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a merchant searching for fine pearls. When he finds a pearl of great price, he goes and sells all that he has and buys it. Dear friends, the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Good morning, my dear brothers and sisters. I hope you are doing very good. Many of us are familiar with King Arthur and, search, and the search for the Holy Grail. When this pandemic started and the shutdown um, was, uh, took, took effect, when the shutdown took effect, um, I went back to history, particularly history of uh, England, and uh, the many myths, myths and legends that are popular in England, and one of which is King Arthur and the search for the Holy Grail. But in Alfred uh, Lord Tennyson's Tale of the Holy Grail, we find a very interesting anecdote. A knight searches high and low for that which lasts for eternity and gives ultimate meaning. He comes upon a singing brook with deep meadows and wonderful fruit trees. But even as he ate the fruit, it turned to dust, for no feeding of the flesh could still his deepest hunger. Riding on, he saw a house. Its open door gave a promised welcome. And at the door, there was a beautiful woman, her eyes innocent and kind. Surely the love of a woman and the sweet shelter of a home are my heart's desire, reasoned the knight. But when I touched her, lo, she too fell into dust and turned to nothing, and the house became no better than a broken shed. So his soul, his soul still craving, he traveled on. He found a warrior clad, on, clad in golden armor, but he also turned to dust. Then he came upon a city that sat upon a hill. Surely civic service and the affection of uh, his fellow men will mean his journey's end. But... When he reached the crest, there was neither city, nor man, nor any voice, so that he cried in grief, Lo, if I find the Holy Grail itself and touch it, it too will crumble into dust. Friends, how often do we find ourselves in the same predicament? 
We keep on searching for that which gives meaning into our lives. And unfortunately, sometimes we think that we can find it among the goods of the earth. So we search for money and more money, thinking that money will give us life's meaning. But we realize that we cannot rely on money because it too may crumble into dust. And this experience of the pandemic has sent this me that message to us very loud and so clear. We search for fame. We search for good and sophisticated life, thinking that they will give us meaning. But we realize that they don't. Fame, good life, or even our jobs aren't very dependable because they too may vanish. We search for friends. We work on surrounding ourselves with good people. But again, we realize that even the truest of our friends may leave us. So, really, we cannot anchor the meaning of our lives merely on the people around us. While these are not at all bad things, we must seek for something greater, something bigger, lest we search for beautiful rainbows and we find ourselves spinning around and around. And therefore, our readings today give us the direction that we all just need. In our first reading today, we find Solomon and what he wants in life. As he begins his kingship at his young age, the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Solomon, ask something of me and I will give it to you. In effect, the Lord is saying, Solomon, what is your heart's desire? What are you looking for? What do you want from me and I will grant it to you? Mind you, in the Bible, you'll find that it is not only Solomon that, uh, who had this privilege of God asking him for what he wanted. In the Gospel of John, Jesus asked his disciples who are following him, What are you looking for? The disciples said, Lord, where do you stay? And he responds, Come and see. And they stayed with him. Or you'll probably remember the blind man Bartimaeus. Jesus asked him, Bartimaeus, what do you want from me? What do you want me to do for you? And he responds, Lord, I want to see. And the rest, as they say, is history. So don't ever think that God asking the question, what do you want me to do for you? Or what are you looking for? Is merely an isolated incident. No, because even until today, if you listen to your heart, you'll hear that the Lord is asking you, what is your heart's desire? What are you looking for in life? Interestingly though, when Solomon responds, he says, Lord, give your servant an understanding heart to judge your people and to distinguish right from wrong. In short, he says, Lord, give me wisdom, make me wise. He didn't ask for money. He didn't ask for fame. He didn't ask for his enemies' lives or for his enemies to die. No. He asked for wisdom. Lord, give me a heart that understands. Make me wise in my judgment. And why wisdom? Because with wisdom, one will know how to deal with everything else in life. When you've got money and wealth, you'll know how to properly use it when you also have wisdom. And in fact, when you, when you lose your wealth, you will also know how to deal with the loss and recover from it when you've got wisdom. The same with fame, with good life, with your jobs. Possessing wisdom, you'll know how to properly handle yourself when blessed with these so many things. And in fact, if and when you lose them, you also know how to hold yourself up again uh, with the help of wisdom. It is the same with relationships and with the people around us. With wisdom, you'll know how to handle or deal with your relationships. And if and when you lose the people around you, you'll be able to make sense of it with the help of wisdom. Friends, the search for wisdom does not cancel all and every other searches that we need to do here on earth. Wisdom does not eliminate the need to want the goods of the earth. But wisdom guides our desires. Wisdom purifies our wants. Wisdom directs our hearts. So that when blessed with the goods of the earth, we can still keep our values intact. And if and when we lose the goods of the earth, we do not lose ourselves. Wisdom, my friends, is the key to a life 
full of meaning. But here's the thing. Wisdom is not an abstract idea. Wisdom is not some lofty, hypothetical, theoretical uh, word. Rather, wisdom is a person, and that person is Jesus Christ. Wisdom personified is Jesus Christ himself. So when it is Christ that we search for, St. Paul says, everything, as in all things, work for good. There is a beautiful Jewish story about Rabbi Akiba. Once he was traveling through the city, through the country, he had with him a donkey, a rooster, and a lamp. At nightfall, he reached a village where he sought shelter for the night, but no one took him in. All that God does work for good, said the rabbi to himself. And proceeding toward the forest, he resolved to pass the night there. So he lit his lamp, but the wind blew it out. All that God does work for good, he said again. Into the night, the donkey and the rooster were devoured by wild beasts. Yet he still said no more than that. All that God does work for good. The next day, he learned that a troop of the enemy's soldiers had passed through the forest that night. If the donkey had brayed, if the rooster had crowed, or if the soldiers had seen his light, he would certainly have met his death. So the rabbi said again, all that God does work for good. My friends, all that God does work for good. But wisdom is certainly required for one to see that all that God does indeed work for good. Amen. Friends called to be more like Christ, we confidently hear our, our, our offer our prayers for all people throughout the world this day. For the church, its leaders, and people, that the language of our prayer may be reflected in our lives each day, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our world and our nation, that blessings of healing and peace may be bestowed upon and embraced by all, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer that those who look forward to receiving the fullness of new life in Christ may feel the strength and support of our prayers as we pray for God's blessing upon their continuing journey. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who face illness or death, for all who live in anxiety or fear, that the Lord may bring hope, comfort, and strength to all. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have died, especially Father Brian Costello, Father Chester Kopek, and Guadalupe Sandoval, that all may find light, happiness, and peace in God's kingdom, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And now, my friends, in the silence of our hearts, we offer to the Lord all our prayers and our heart's desires. We pray for our families, loved ones, and friends. We pray for those who have asked us that we pray for them and for their intentions. For those who are sick, those who have contracted the virus, we pray for their healing. We pray for their families. We pray that everyone may be reunited. Merciful God, in your kindness, hear the prayers we offer in faith this day. Lead us by the grace of the Holy Spirit as we strive to walk in the footsteps of Christ. In faith and hope, we offer our prayers this day through Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received this bread we offer you, fruit of the earth, and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. By the mystery of this water and wine, may we come to share in the divinity of Christ, who humbled himself to share in our humanity. 
Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received this wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. With humble spirit and contrite heart may be accepted by you, O Lord, and may your sacrifice in your sight this day be pleasing to you, Lord God. Lord, wash away my iniquities and cleanse me from my sins. And so pray, my dear brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Accept, O Lord, we pray, the offerings which we bring from the abundance of your gifts, that through the powerful working of your grace, these most sacred mysteries may sanctify our present way of life and lead us to eternal gladness through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty in our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, for you laid the foundations of the world and have arranged the changing of times and seasons. You formed man in your own image and set humanity over the whole world in all its wonder to rule in your name over all you have made and forever praise you in your mighty works through Christ our Lord. And so with all the angels, we praise you as in joyful celebration, we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, this gift we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples saying, take this all of you and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of, this, of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church is spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, Gerald, our Bishop, Alberto, our Coadjutor, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. And now at a Savior's command and form by divine teaching, we all dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. 
Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. And the peace of the Lord be with you always. We now offer each other the sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold, my dear friends, Jesus, the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I'm not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and never forget all his benefits. Let us pray. We have consumed, O Lord, this divine sacrament, the perpetual memorial of the passion of your Son. Grant, we pray, that this gift, which he himself gave us with love beyond all telling, may profit us for salvation through Christ our Lord. Amen. And some announcements for this weekend. Uh, please remember that fall re 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 registration for religious education will begin on Monday, August 3rd. Please check our parish website for detailed instructions on how to register for classes, or you can also call our catechetical ministry office for guidance. And uh, immediately following uh, the Mass, Sister Sarah will bring you the children's liturgy, so please stay tuned. And uh, after this online Mass, uh, beginning at 10 a.m. until 12 o'clock noon, we will offer the Eucharist. We will distribute communion here at the parish parking lot. Uh, and in order to receive communion, of course, you must have already received your first communion, have participated fully and completely in our live stream uh, Masses, either today or yesterday. You gotta be in the state of grace and meet the Eucharistic fast requirements of no food or beverages except water for an hour before you receive the Eucharist. This is how uh, the process will uh, unfold. All cars will have to enter gate one through Boys Republic Drive. You will not be parking, rather you will simply enter uh, your vehicle for uh, communion. You'll make vehicle line for communion. Please follow the guidance of all our ministers as they direct you to the communion distribution point. Please be aware that you will exiting you will be exiting your vehicle to receive communion unless you have great difficulty walking. 
ministers will come to you instead. Please be aware that there is no upper age limit if you meet all of the above requirements and, of course, you are physically healthy, you are welcome to receive communion today, Sunday, July 26. Again, it will be from 10 a.m. to 12 o'clock noontime. We ask that you please bring your hand sanitizers and make sure that everyone in the vehicle is wearing a mask. With all that being said, please bring with you a good amount of patience and a prayerful, joyful spirit as this is still a brand new procedure for our parish. We, of course, we are still making adjustments and we also don't know how many will come at a certain time. So please be very, very patient, but everything should be smooth as uh, how we did it last Sunday. And finally, on behalf of our pastors, Father Romeo Selection MS, uh, I wish to thank you for your constant generosity and support to the parish. All throughout this, uh, uh, this pandemic, we have seen your consistency and your constancy in your support and generosity to the parish. So we've got nothing in our hearts but gratitude and appreciation. Thank you all so much. The Lord be with you. And may Almighty God bless and keep you and your loved ones in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our celebration has been offered. Now go or probably see you later and always glorify and praise God. Thanks be to God. We sing first, this is the day. This is the day, this is the day that the Lord has made, that the Lord has made. We will rejoice, we will rejoice and be glad in it, and be glad in it. So this is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. We, this is the day, this is the day that the Lord has made. See you in a bit. <laughs>